Hey, it's Jessica Damasa with WTF Health. I'm here at HIMSS Europe and also Health 2.0 Europe, and I am delighted to be here with Indu Sabaya. She is the co-founder of Health 2.0, the president of Catalyst Health, and also, I don't know, a renaissance woman in healthcare, generally speaking. Did I get all the titles right? That's funny. I think renaissance woman covers it. Yeah, I think so. All of the above. So. All of the above, exactly. <laughs> oh, senior advisor for HIMSS. That was the one that I forgot. Okay. So, Indu, so glad to have you here. I'd love to just kind of pick your brain about what's going on in healthcare, being as you are somebody who is all over the place and working in a lot of different aspects of the, the integration of digital health into the, into the traditional healthcare system. And you've had your eye on this space for how many years now? I hate to ask. on 13. <laughs> 13 years. So, I mean, you've seen this evolve over time. So give us a sense of where we're at right now. What's the state of play as you're seeing it here today? Yeah, it's super exciting to be in Europe specifically, I think, this year because um, the acceleration we've seen in this region has been out of control. Yeah. Um, I would say one of the most exciting turning points has been the engagement of clinicians okay. and not just the design of tools, but the implementation and the rollout, um, the sophistication that we're seeing just on provider workflow yeah. um, and the nuanced ways in which um, you can impact that, whether it's from you know their, their own kind of collaboration with each other, mm -hmm. whether it's about sharing patient information. So to me, that was one of the biggest sort of eye openers from this conference in particular. I did a panel on uh, improving workflow and was blown away. Do you think that that's a lesson learned from the problems of EMR integration from years ago? Or I've been talking to you know different innovators here in Europe, in particular in like the in the Nordic countries, mm -hmm. and they're really talking about how no innovation is not just the new app; it's mm -hmm. it's changing the process. Do you think they have a different understanding of that here in Europe than they do in the U.S.? Or what do you? think is driving this clinician involvement? I think there's maybe three things. Okay. I think that one is that I think there's a much more holistic, strategic approach taken to digital health mm -hmm. adoption in some of these countries. Okay. So it's not so much the introduction of a random tool by a random clinician in a random department of a hospital. It's usually a top-down strategy mm -hmm. by the health system, by the hospital system, saying across all of our specialties, we're going to take an approach to do virtual care, to do remote monitoring, to do patient education. So it's basically coming from this sort of lens now and even though these efforts are only maybe three years old, four years old in some cases, it is this sort of holistic approach from the top with leadership and buy-in. So I think that's one of it. Yeah. I think the second is that um, the clinicians themselves are being engaged. So many people have these sort of dual appointments now where they're not expected to just shove in digital health in their spare time, because yeah. when do you do that? Right. It's an actual part of their jobs, their actual roles. Uh, teams are being formed, interdisciplinary teams between social workers and psychologists and docs and, and including patients, which is a big thing that we're seeing here in Europe more than anything. And I think the third is just the generation of doctor, and I shouldn't just say doctor because it's all providers. Yeah. Um, even in 10 years, you're seeing a different generation of practitioner okay. who is demanding this as much as the next person. So they're not only um, adopting, they're creating the technologies, they're driving what needs to be built. And so I'm really excited by all three of those developments. I think back in the US, we're still struggling a bit mm -hmm. with that transition from the EMR sure. to digital health, quote unquote in terms of clinician engagement. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of folks have been burnt and burnt out ah, yeah. by the first wave. And so, um, I don't know, a lot more optimism here, here I feel, on the clinician side. I know um, one of the things that, you, that everybody is watching in the space, I'd love for you to weigh in, is the entrance of, with, with additional force this time, of the big tech companies mm -hmm. coming down the pike. And yeah. so we're seeing a lot more movement, not only on you know the consumer-facing tools, but also on the enterprise side of things. And I think everybody's looking at, oh, what's Amazon and what's Google and you know what's Microsoft? What are they doing in this space? How do you see that kind of panning out from your perspective? Perspective right now, is this kind of, is this going to be the end of the little startups that we've kind of got, gotten to know and love? I mean, we're seeing a lot of consolidation in that space as well. What do you think? I think. Um it's going to push startups to be exceptional, to compete even harder than they've ever competed, to be players in a new ecosystem. There's no question, in my opinion, that aspects of supply chain and healthcare, uh, aspects of delivery and convenience to the consumer will in some way be impacted by Amazon. There's no question in my mind that wearables and operating systems and the integration of Apple Watch will impact that sector of kind of the consumer yeah. wearable tracking industry. And I think in terms of um, the Googles and Microsofts of the world, I think the cloud is here. Yeah. And they're playing in the cloud hardcore, they're doing healthcare business. Um, and by the way, Amazon too on that front. Yeah. So I think in those arenas, they're here and they're here to stay. That doesn't mean there isn't room for the myriad solutions that we're seeing coming out of the out of the digital health industry, in fact, more than ever. Yeah. So to me, um, 
you know, you might be seeing more of an Azure-based environment or a Google Cloud, um, but now we're going to need even more on top of it. So um, I think it's not less sort of welcoming an environment for startups, but I think different startups will rise to the surface, mm -hmm. um, and they'll need to sort of tailor to where they're not trying to reduplicate efforts um, and really stand out. Yeah. So, okay, on that same point mm -hmm. then, what's the what's the, the the need to know for the healthcare incumbents? Mm -hmm. So, and I know this is something that you guys with Catalyst work on quite a bit, is how do you, you know, either introduce new digital solutions or startup companies to incumbent healthcare organizations, or how do you make that chasm of like jumping through the process integration a little bit softer to bear, and how do you kind of bring that external innovation capability inside? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, talk to me, I guess, about what they would need to know. Like, so those health plans out there, or the hospitals, systems, like what do they really need to be ready for now as the market even becomes more crowded, not just with the startups, but with the big tech companies that they kind of know. Right. I would say be careful of this new category of organization that we're calling kind of the, the flipped stack company. Okay. So whereas um, before I would say healthcare delivery organizations thought about adopting technology to do their work differently and better, okay. now I think that companies are starting as technology platforms, layering on services, layering on humans, um, and hiring in many in many cases their own providers. So if okay. you think about that, mm -hmm. they're maybe taking you know a condition like diabetes, um, or they're saying. Um, I was just talking to a company looking at um, uh, cardiac rehab. Okay. So they're no longer saying, I've got to work with a hospital. I've got to get buy-in with this customer, with this provider. They're saying, I'm just going to go do business with a physician group that can be cardiac rehabilitation doctors. Got it. And then they're going to hire them, deliver that service, get it even paid for, accept reimbursement. So what I see happening is that technology companies are going to compete with existing providers in niche disease markets. Okay around not just technology provision, but the provision of care and getting reimbursed for it. So it's this wraparound mm -hmm. kind of organization that's fundamentally a tech company that could start competing with providers around certain niche conditions. And I think that's something to really be careful and watch for. And to say, well, how can we play well together? Yeah. You know, I think the other piece is around data sharing. I think providers have a huge, huge question to answer in the coming months, years, about their role in the data ecosystem. Are they, how is data going to play? I was going to say, what question are they going to answer? Is yeah. like, do I participate or not? Like, yeah. what's the question in your mind that they'll need to answer? So I think, to, no matter what people say about open data, I think for health systems and providers in mm -hmm. general, it's still a proprietary asset. and. That in some ways has to be redefined. Now, I understand that it's not simply about opening up data and suddenly everything is yeah. everyone's. Um, I get that there are institutional safeguards that have to be in place, but I think we're going to see tension between um, ownership of data, brokering of data, monetization of data, Absolutely. trading of data, and providers are going to have to define um, their role in that. And I think come to terms with how they participate in an economy around data that's transparent, that still respects the fact that it belongs to the patient at the end of the day, um, how to be effective stewards of it, but I think people are going to want that data, and, and more and more stakeholders are going to find ways to get it. We're seeing, I think, too, I mean, not, not only um, in the U.S., but also in other countries abroad, I mean, with GDP. PR, it's becoming a privacy issue, it's becoming an access issue. I mean, how do you see that evolving, I guess, like, you know, moving forward? Because we're, we're in kind of uncharted territory with this, right? Absolutely, I think we need new models. Okay. I think the idea of saying, well, you know, don't give your health information to Facebook because look what they're going to do, and therefore we'll sort of keep it come up behind iron walls for you. Um, is sort of one problem, right. you know, responding to another problem and not really the path forward. Okay. So I think that we definitely are in a bit of a reactionary mode right now where there's been a ton of sort of scary stuff yeah. happening to data and rightly so, people are protective. I think privacy concerns are paramount as they should be, mm -hmm. but the answer isn't then to hoard and, right. and to not share yeah. uh, and to be even more closed off. I think the answer is we need new models mm -hmm. where um, whether it's blockchain enabled, where the consumer slash individual still has extreme autonomy, but there are controls in place, there's yeah. transparency. Uh, and most importantly, I think people are tired of who's making money off my data. Yeah, and that definitely. issue of monetizing health information just needs to come out in the open. Yeah. So I don't know what the answer is, but it's certainly not um, 
to sort of react to what big tech uh, is doing with data by then being equally protectionist. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have to come up with other ways. Exciting stuff, right? Yeah. So, okay, one last thing I wanted to get into with you is the healthcare road trip. Yeah. I would like to just, if you could introduce that project. I actually, um, I spoke with one of one of your colleagues who participated yeah. in, in filming that with you last summer, but I understand you're going to be doing this again this year. So for those who are not familiar, what's the healthcare road trip? Yeah, it's super exciting. So I started out last year with an effort to interview and meet with grassroots organizations that are trying to change health and healthcare from the bottom up. So okay. this is not so much, you know, your large tech companies uh, or even your large healthcare organizations making change, but individuals and communities um, coming together in unique ways and cross-disciplinary ways to, to impact health. So for example, we looked at a program out of LA Public Library okay. offering resources to uh, people experiencing homelessness by bringing all the sort of services together in one spot in the yeah. library, including health services including access to phones uh, and others, and um, talked about how they were changing health at a local level. Um, this coming year, we're looking to meet with more organizations, um, and we're going to be from the East Coast looking at kind of equity uh, affected programs by payers, uh, also looking at um, Texas, where people are going on the road to look at what federally qualified health clinics need. Uh, so it's, it's about stories. Um, at the community level. So if you know of things um, that, and it's an untold story where people are actually making a difference, creating an impact and have something that other communities could share, please reach out, um, hcroadtrip.com and org, I believe. Okay, <laughs> awesome, very cool, hcroadtrip.com and dot org. Awesome, very cool. Um, last thing, where do I get this cute little bag, oh, Renaissance lady? That's Look right. at this. I mean, this is just so stylish. I love it. <laughs> so this is uh, this is the within. It's called a hip clutch. Um, and yes, in all my spare time, I have created something. <laughs> because frankly, when you're at conferences, right? Yeah. Do you want to be carrying no. that big old bag, mm -mm. right? You need some place for your phone. I love sick. Exactly. <laughs> so it's for all those women on the go. Um, no, I love it. And I love that you've become like a like an <laughs> entrepreneur now in fashion. Like, okay, because you know, Healthcare is not hard enough, right? <laughs> like, well, let me pick the next hardest industry. It's like it's like the startup entrepreneur in me, you know. I get it. Exactly. But I totally um, get I, it. yeah, it's called Within, and uh, we sort of soft launched last year, All and right. so stay tuned. Awesome, Indu. It's always a pleasure to, to pick your brain. I could continue to talk to you forever. There's like so much. It just you're such a wealth of knowledge in this space. So I appreciate you stopping by and and telling all of our viewers what you think about kind of where we're at, state of play wise, and digital health right now. So thank you Thanks, so Jessica. much. Thanks. I'm Jessica Damaso with WTF Health. Thanks so much for watching.